Okay, this is an odd one, but if you know me and my taste, I like the odd ones. From Scorpion Releasing, we have a new Blu-ray of 1968's The Wicked Die Slow. This is an American-made ode to spaghetti westerns shot in New Jersey. This is, uh, it's an odd film. I'm going to tell you a, bit, a little bit about the plot, and then we'll dig into what kind of an oddball thing this is. So, film opens. I'm not going to tell you the whole story. Film opens with uh, a young woman out in a, in a clearing in the woods somewhere. Uh, a cowboy guy uh, sees her. We think this is going to go into a dark territory. It, it doesn't. They, they team up. Uh, he, this guy is looking for his brother who's who's gone missing somewhere and uh, the guy and the girl are, are together, they get together and then later this pistol packing preacher shows up into this small western town where it's one of those small western towns where everybody looks like they just, the clothes just came off the, <laughs> off the rack and it really kind of looks like 1967-68 if people kind of dressed a little rural. And that pistol packing preacher, um, I hate to give it away, kills that brother kills the guy we've been following this up to this point in the movie. And then that part of the movie has nothing to do with the rest of what we're going to watch. So the film really is about the guy who technically is the, the brother that was being looked for teaming up with a Mexican to uh, take on these bad guys, these desperados, these ruffians who uh, brutalized his girlfriend. And along the way, they, 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 they find... Some of these same guys are, are about to brutalize uh, an elderly man and his daughter. They shoot the, these bad guys, and the elderly man is like, well, you know, I, I don't have much I can give you in thanks, but there is my daughter. So, the, so, okay, so this film is really not very good. This is really very crudely made film. It is uh, entirely post-sync dubbed, and it's just, it's one of those things that I watch and I'm impressed by, because this because it played theaters. These movies in these days, you could make a really oddball, weird, technically kind of crude movie like this, and it would get distribution and it would play in theaters. So I watched something like this and I'm like, there was a time in this country where people paid to see this. Now I'm not saying a lot of people did, but usually there'd be a really good ad campaign, a really good poster. Sometimes people might not even see a trailer. They'd see a poster, they'd see a title in the newspaper and a description, and like, yeah, let's go see that. And it, sometimes it would be double featured with something a little bit more polished. But th this movie hit screens, and it is the kind of movie that you cannot imagine hitting a screen now, probably, but it did. So it's, uh, it looks fantastic. Let's say that. Uh, I could not believe how good this movie looked on this transfer from Scorpion. It looked like it was shot yesterday, like... It's really impressive how good this film looks, considering what it is. And considering what its origins were and what it is, the fact that the materials were maintained this long and preserved and not lost and could yield something that looks like this is incredible to me. So the deal with this movie is something like this. Jeff Canoe, who K-A-N-E-W, was one of the writers on the film. And I believe he plays the Mexican in the movie. He uh, was had a company cutting trailers. This is I learned all this from the extras, so I'm, I'm kind of spoiling the extras more than I am the film. He uh, had a company cutting trailers. He cut the trailer for uh, Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, and so loved the movie, wanted to be, basically make a film that was an ode to that, which is what this movie is. He hooked up with a distributor he was working for, who made like softcore or adult films, and which this movie feels like. This movie verges into that territory a couple times. I will say that it's got the rape thing going on because apparently that was required in late 60s, early 70s cinema. And it's got it a couple times. Um, not really that explicit, but there is one sequence where a barmaid is getting attacked on the bar of, of, of uh, a bar, in a, in a bar room. And elements of the frame are blurred. And I really couldn't tell if that was done for this video release to, to make it so that it wouldn't, you know, be an X-rated film, or if it was done originally or what. And it makes me think that maybe some things were shot that were a bit more explicit in this film. Because I kept saying while I was watching this, this feels like a porno movie with the sex cut out of it. Like that's the level of the acting and the, and the filmmaking for the most part. And it keeps kind of going up to that line, but not really being very explicit. And it makes me wonder if at one point there was a harder cut of this. In the extra with Jeff Canoe, he talks about the fact that he was making this for a company that usually made those kind of movies, but it was the way his movie got made. 
and he said he made what he thought was a, he, since he was a trailer cutter, he knew about timing and pacing. He had cut a film that he thought was really good, but it wasn't even an hour long, so they needed to go back and shoot more. And that's where that prologue, which was shot by entirely other people and feels like a different movie, um, that's where that came from. And that's where maybe some other things, maybe there were some inserts that were shot to, to make this movie a little saucier, I'm not sure. But it's to me, this is one of those things where the story behind the movie is more interesting than the movie itself. Because the movie, honestly, to me, was kind of hard to get through just because it's so, it's the kind of thing that something weird would have released long ago. Like, this feels like a something weird tape, like if A Curse of the Headless Horseman or something like that. Pardon the, pardon the hair, just got a new haircut and it doesn't quite know what to do yet. There we are. I'm fine. I look like Superman. Uh, so, anyway, extras. Interview with uh, star and writer Jeff Canoe, 16 minutes, where he talks about uh, how what I just told you, basically. You get uh, trailers for other Scorpion releasing films. California Dreaming, Act of Vengeance, 315, The Moment of Truth, uh, Beast with a Million Eyes, and Record City. And it's an interesting release for a movie that I thought was not very interesting. So uh, the cover looks a little bit like that. So from that, it looks like, uh, it's, it almost looks like it could be a horror movie or it could be something a little, little untoward. And it's, it's marginally untoward. And then uh, on the inside, uh, nothing too fancy, just, uh, just a disc with the same artwork. So, and uh, on the back, a couple stills. And uh, yeah, so available now, if you're into weird old exploitation stuff, if you're into like almost lost movies, or if you just really like Westerns and want to see a shot in New Jersey, American take on the good, the bad, and the ugly, Scorpion releasing on Blu-ray has for you from 1968. Oh yeah, and Jeff Canoe went on to do things like little things, Revenge of the Nerds, Gotcha, Tough Guys, Troop Beverly Hills, like he worked, he worked and worked and worked. V.I. Warshawski, he said V.I. Warshawski basically kind of killed his career, but so that's fascinating about this too, is somebody who made this weird little obscure exploitation, almost softcore movie, went on to make like major Hollywood stuff that people still remember. So interesting to see where people come from. So available on Blu-ray from Scorpion releasing is The Wicked Dice Love.